Do reptile creators need to have more accountability, including myself? Now, let me explain. So, as a creator, obviously, you're making videos, and that goes out, and that gets ad revenue, but that, once you move on in time, that video doesn't stop getting views from new people. It still exists in this matrix of the, the YouTube algorithm web, um, and it still gets in new viewers. But even though you as a creator are like, well, I've moved on from that. And people, if people look at my channel and know that uh, what I recommend now is completely different to that. Let's say a video I made like six years ago or three years ago is something that I don't actually really agree with now. And I think is actually really outdated information and actually doesn't really serve the animal in the way that I'd like it to now. Should I pull that video down? Do I have a responsibility to pull that video down? Surely if in this industry of the raptor hobby, those are the biggest platforms that being us creators. If we have the biggest voices, surely we have the biggest responsibility. Now, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna quote Spider Man on you, but the general idea is like we made something. It's like Frankenstein. We made something. Did we make a monster in three years' time? Or should we look back at that and be like, yeah, let's pull that down? Or at the very least, should we be asking creators to like make some sort of effort to let people know that that video is like really outdated? Or at least there's a new version. Because back in the day, you used to have like annotations. Um, annotations would be like the big clunky boxes that would pop up and you'd have to literally like press X to get rid of them. Now, as a creator, you used to be able to plonk them on and cover the entire screen if you wanted to um, and you can make it very very clear that you have to read that before because you have to read the box to get rid of it so you could put like hey guys this is like outdated now but there's a new one here click this box and it'll take you there so you could really like account for that and make sure you didn't lose like the revenue that you might have got from that um, from the click or something like that but nowadays they've taken away that so on one hand, the argument is like, well, if I take down every single piece of content I've ever made, then revenue wise, the things that are established and mature in the algorithm that are constantly getting reliable views um, that are contributing to paying the bills, if I were to start putting things down no matter what, um, it might have a massive financial impact. But on the other side, like morally, if I love reptiles, shouldn't I like be willing to take that hit? I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I know personally, I don't make enough money for it to make a difference to me. But I know if you're a larger creator, then clearly if it's a video that's like got a million views, for me, with a video that's got like 500 and it makes no difference, yeah, I'll delete that. Yeah, it's fine. But when you're, it's something that's actually a real money maker. And in the last 28 days, it made like five grand or something. That's real talk and real money there. So from my perspective, I've pulled down a fair few videos from like the first year that. I think were more aggressive than I wanted them to be. Um, or that I might be slightly different now. I still feel like it would serve the animal. I just feel like it might not serve the channel as much. Um, but there are some things that I'm like, I talked really positively about something like heat projectors. Whereas nowadays I'm like, I wouldn't use them and I wouldn't recommend them. So things like that I've pulled down or at least changed. So do we have uh, like a responsibility as creators to either put like a card that comes up to say, hey, this is really updated, please find the new one, and put a pinned comment at the very least and say, hey, this is outdated, come find the new one. But do we not have like a massive responsibility and therefore accountability for the way that we govern ourselves? I don't know what the answer is. I, I can only do what I think is right for myself and what I think makes me feel okay and makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing. So I can't, you can't force people to do things, but it's just a question like, should, should us creators have more responsibility and accountability? Because you know, some people have made some questionable content in the past, even though now like they would outright like, yeah, I don't think that. But you still left it up. Again, like, I don't, I can't tell you what to do, but that's a question that's in my head. I even question myself, like almost like should I? And there's things that I have deleted. I've privated some videos that I think don't serve in the way that I want it to, and I really want to have the best impact on reptiles I can, and be as helpful as I can to reptiles, and have as much appreciable impact upon people's reptiles' lives because that's what drives me. So obviously, I pulled those videos down because I didn't want that having a really negative impact. 
or what's the answer? What do we what what answer do we come to as a, a community? What collective culture do we want to have? Because I, I don't know the answer. And the other question that brings me on to that is do we need to have more accountability for repto content on YouTube when you say something scientific? Do we need to have a culture and breed a new culture where it's okay to reply to each other and refute or produce rebuttals to science? Now, I've, I've dabbled in it in the past, and I think there's a really decent way you can do it really respectfully is you don't talk about the person, you never talk about the person, no personal attacks or ad hominem, as it's called, that doesn't get you anywhere. It's just unprofessional and it's just unfair as well. But only talking about, hey, this is the science, um, that actually may not be correct, this study actually says this, and you only ever talk about the science. If someone expresses an opinion, yeah, and then it kind of like devolves into arguing. But I mean, there's a, there's a culture in science of like, it's very, very normal for one scientist to produce a paper and then another scientist to make a paper that refutes that paper and like produces a rebuttal. And that's because it's very normal. And that's how you get like really healthy um, science because if something stands up to the test of like, um, being refuted and things like that, then clearly like science gets better and better and like things get stronger and stronger. And things that weren't very good and that someone found a way to like obviously show that it's quite clearly flawed falls down and that we find our way, our path to the truth essentially. And that's just how science works. But should we have that culture on YouTube? Should we be saying like we need to hold each other accountability, uh, ac accountable and have that scientific integrity. Because let's be honest, like reptile care and animal care is a scientific field. Animal behavior is a scientific field of study. Animal welfare is a scientific field of study. So we're dabbling in science here. So should we have the same sort of scientific integrity to ourselves? And it includes me as well. Like if I'm producing scientific videos and I think that I'm quite good at it. So I would welcome people to make rebuttal videos to anything that I make because it only makes me better. So if you generally find studies and a scientific way to really prove something that I've said is wrong, I'll be like, great, because it's, that's just science and I can really appreciate that. So what I think is interesting is this culture has started on the likes of like TikTok, where you reply with like stitches and there are creators that are a bit more scientific or normal creators that reply to each other and like, hey, actually the science says this and this and this. And they are breeding the sort of similar culture of the science of like refuting each other. And should we have that on YouTube? The problem is, is that I think I'm not sure that we... I don't know if people can be sensible enough to do it properly. Like, there's one thing about having a decorum and like, right, we talk about the science, we don't attack the person, that's unfair to a person, there's no reason to be like that. But then it's like, is everyone going to stick to those rules? Or does it start off with being like, if I were to start making videos, being like, hey, just this little bit of science here, you asked the question in this video, here's the science for you, and just like making those videos and then inviting it back. Can we rely on it staying to like a scientific integrity sort of thing rather than it divulging into like personal attacks and bickering and just nonsense about like response videos and it's not being like scientific and just, just about the science? Because I would honestly dream of a world where we talk about self-regulation all the time. Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? So if there was this like ideal culture where I would make a video and someone would be like, I'm pretty sure I've seen a study or something that disagrees with that. Or I can use multiple studies and to to prove my rationale as my argument for I think that could be counter to that. I would absolutely love that. But I don't think that I could start that because I just feel like it would devolve into like bickering and like, well, you're this and you're that rather than being like, yeah, with that science, and I, I just think it would devolve. I don't know what you think. 
I've been thinking about how like it can be better because everyone talks about YouTube being a cesspool outside of YouTube and it doesn't need to be and it really bothers me because there are fantastic creators that are producing like amazing content and I was at home incredible Laurie Torini incredible there's so many people that are doing like really really good content are getting more and more academic and more and more scientific with it and having this ethos that's really really good that I think is unfair to be calling YouTube a cesspool um, even if there are like a lowest common denominator that people are like using that as the idea in the head as to why they're calling it. But then how do we self-regulate and like elevate the quality of us as a platform? And what do we do in the future if YouTube decides to do a Facebook and, and, and completely like Zuckerberg us like they did to Facebook groups where they were like no animal cells or during COVID, not that word, during that time, it was like the misinformation things and they would pull down videos and stuff. What if YouTube got very like no animal content because it's such a cesspool in their eyes or that someone convinced them that there was? Should we have this culture or try and start this culture? I don't know. I, I don't know how, I, how we would do it because I, I've done elements of it in the past, but I don't want to... It's difficult because you try and do something and you're like, this could be really positive for all of us. And like, to me as well, in the reverse. But then if you had to start doing that, I think people would be like, yeah, you're just a dick who's got something to say about what everyone else puts on the internet. But then at the same time, it's like, well, if you want to talk science, if you want to play science, come play science. But if you don't, then why are we talking about science? It's like my opinion is my opinion. Therefore, blah, 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 blah. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, this is very much just like me just vomiting to you. Because um, I wanted a little bit of an organic video for tonight. Well, we were meant to put a podcast video out for tonight, but it got delayed. So I want to give you something. And this one's a bit of a, like a thought one. And I want to know what you guys think. Because I don't know. So let's keep this one short. Thank you very much for listening to my ramblings. I don't know if this is any benefit to you or I got anyone thinking or you're like, shut up, Liam. I don't know. But regardless, thank you for listening. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe already and I'll see you in another video.